Hello, welcome to 50 Questions Friday for February 16th at 2024. Thank you all for joining us here today. And again, if you are here live, please do drop your questions on the questions tab and the chat is for everybody here to utilize. Um, and I did drop in a new product here into the chat. Hey, Christine from Oz. I hope it is beautiful weather down there. So we'll go ahead and start by going into the sacred space of the heart to in the three breath technique that we call the Trinity breath. And it is something that, um, gosh, we try to do before every webinar. We do it before any kind of energy work, decisions, or even interactions with the world. Because when you move the consciousness from the head back into the sacred space of the heart, you are less influenced by the thought forms, the emotions, and all. Hey, John from Mexico. Hey, Thomas. And uh, yes, thank you all for joining us here today. Hey, Thomas from Illinois. Awesome. Uh, hey, Sarah from Michigan. Yes, uh, please do join us live here if you're watching YouTube. And um, and yeah, we should have a fun time here. Hey, Alan from France. Hey, Nika from so the Southern Cali. All right, we'll go ahead and step into the heart space here. So just putting your attention to your physical heart where you find your light. Now imagining connecting or intending connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that energy, that support of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. The second breath connect with you as creator, God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. And that third breath is where we breathe in the energies of both the earth and creation, bringing them through us. We take in that deep breath from both those energies mixed together within the heart and you send them right back out. So you are grounded, connected and in the heart space. Hey, Renard, good to see you here. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of questions coming in. I know we just restarted up 50 Questions Friday. So um, anyway, if you do have some questions and you're not able to attend live, please do send your questions to info at twistedsage.com. All right, so I guess we'll make some announcements here. Um, just to let everybody know, the light bangles that we have, the, this is the extra small and the small. Neither one of those fit my hands, but I know a lot of folks whose this hand does fit over. Um, these have been energetically upgraded as of February 1st. So all the light bangles that are going out of the studio as of February 1st have this new energetic, which is that of the infinite light pendants, the infinite light 2.0. Amazing energetic. Um, the halos also have them. And you might've seen a testimonial that I wrote from being in Los Angeles last weekend at a, at a large event. And I tell you what, being in the city, it is really nice to wear a halo. Um, and it was really interesting because everybody at that show who put a halo on, you could feel it and you could see it in their body. And they would also um, r respond with that whole concept of just everything, just kind of grounding in, come back to mind, come back into that peace. And the halos, when you wear them, they're just grounding, connecting. And they're bringing in that light of you, uh, that new light body that we've been seeing coming in since March. 
which again is the culmination of the wisdom of lifetimes and your soul. And it is more of a personified part of your soul. Um, anyway, this part has been coming in and doing a lot of amazing, amazing things. And one of the things that I know most of Halos is that it is the grounding of the mind. So it has taken the mind and it is connecting it to that heart of the earth. And when that occurs, it is really fantastic. And you don't need the tools to do this. We have this in those meditations. Um, I know, let's see, I'm pretty sure we did it in our first Wisdom Circle Wednesdays, which is also on YouTube. And we'll also have the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays coming up again here next week. So... If you're on the mailing list, please look out for that email and um, we'll let you know when that is so you can register. Um, let's see some of the other announcements. We will here in the next week have our um, sound healing rings. It is a triquatra of rings interwoven, uh, three rings that create that Vesca Pisces or the triquatra right in the center. These sound healing rings have been really fantastic in the past, and I've heard some great things about these rings here. And we've only have a few sets out in the world right now um, for people that do sound healing to check them out to give feedback. But these will be available on the website here within the next week. Also, if you are here on the 16th of February, this next uh, three days, we're actually having a storewide um, inventory reduction sale. And so we're having a 14% off of almost everything except for the floor plates and the chambers. Um, so please do check that out if you'd like. And otherwise, let's see. I'll do another announcement of a new product here in a few, and we will jump into questions here. Um, hey, Connie from Maine. All right. So here is our first question from Sarah, and thank you, Sarah. I am new to Tensor Rings. Every product seems amazing. My daughter and I have MTHFR gene, so detoxing is more difficult for us. I think this is one of the reasons she has trouble sleeping through the night. She's only three years old. I'm not sure where to start. Perhaps even something just to smooth out the energies within her. Suggestions. So, gosh, there's a few things here. Um, one I would consider, so this will be on a little bit of the higher end, but I would consider the highest potentials practitioner ring. Um, this highest potentials practitioner ring, it's about a 27 inch ring. And again, the rings create a column of energy. And so when you sleep within these columns and how most of us do this is we'll take that large ring and we'll affix it to the headboard or to the wall in front of the bed. And so if this is your bed and you are laying in your bed and you put the spring right up at the headboard, you are then sleeping within this column of energy. And during sleep time is really a fantastic time to allow these fields to do the work. And the highest potentials is totally what I would suggest. Now, this highest potentials, um, we've seen people that are doing a physical detox and as that energy comes into the body, we've seen that it just transmutes those toxins right there within the body. So they become something that is more beneficial to you. So that is one thing. The other thing is that all of these tools work with the DNA. And when you are in these fields, it allows you a, a better connection with self. And you can simply, well, being in the heart space, you don't need the tools again, but these tools are fantastic to assist. But just being in the heart space and releasing this. 
And when you release this, have that intention of releasing it for all hereditary up and down the line. So the releasing, and that might be something too, if you are into doing the energy work and don't want to use a tool, then please do join us on the Wisdom Wednesdays, the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays. But otherwise, for using the tools, I would still suggest something in the highest potentials. The first thought for your daughter was the little, um, we have a little one and a half inch tensor field generator that's in the highest potentials. And that would be fantastic just to have in the home. It covers, the field is about the size of the home. Now, really the, the practitioner rings are a lot more potent, which is why I would, you know, that's why that one came up as a suggestion first. So anyway, that's, that's where I would begin is to utilize any of the highest potentials, energetics, and again, doing the work for yourself, which then you do for all of, all of your generations, all of your family, forward and backward. So in doing this work, it's not hard and it does not have to be hard. It is simply going into the heart space and making those clear conscious statements to the soul, such as I release this genetic heritage from me and all of my family. And that really truly is in this time, the most profound thing you can do is be in the heart, talk with your soul. All right. A uh, question from Alan. Is there a difference between the energy of the wings of talk and the key pendant? Um, yes, they, they are two totally different energetics. Um, though the, yeah, they're still two totally different energetics. Now the wings of talk, it does work in the entire field. Um, it is something that you can actively use it to create columns of light, basically replicating that field and placing it other places or leaving it in other places, that energetic field of it, um, which is all on the, the webinars related to the wings of talk. So again, the wings of talk is one that is for environmental as well as all of your internal. Um, and it just does deep clearing and release. It is in that wisdom energetics. <clears throat> now the key pendant, the key pendant is a very elusive one in that, you know, you really don't feel it when you put it on, but you notice it when you take it off. Now that key pendant is working in some different realms that I do not perceive. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, information written on the website about that key pendant, but really it was the first tool that I wore that would keep me clear of energetic attachments, such as ghosts. Um, it just clears them completely out of the field. It actually crosses a ghost over and the soul takes them home. Um, but it is an amazing tool. I keep one in my car, I hang it from the mirror and I'll spin it because they spin really well on those ball bearing swivels. And basically if I'm out in traffic, stuck in traffic, I'll just spin it and just kind of clears the energy all around. Um, so they do have similarities, but um, I would say the biggest thing is that one is for your personal connecting, aligning, balancing, working in your personal field. And the other one is traditionally used for more environmental work. <clears throat> A uh, question from Nika. Will the silver creation field finger rings be coming back in stock? Does it contain the wisdom energies as well? So the creation field does contain the wisdom energetics in that. That is, that is a potential within that creation field. Now the silver creation field rings, it's a heavier gauge ring. And we do plan on making those um, and actually making entire runs of them with all the sizes of half and whole sizes. Um, that's something that's been kind of on the back burner and we do plan on having those out here this spring. So, 
So let's see. Uh, Christine, I love my large silver creation field wand and also have the large wisdom wand. Should I use them together? You can most, <clears throat> pardon me, you can most certainly, <clears throat> pardon me, snowy out here today. I think I'm starting to catch the sniffles. Been run down from being on the road for, I don't know, months. So anyway, um, using those two wands together is absolutely appropriate. And you, what we always tell people is to really just feel into it uh, and to feel into it. It's being in that heart space. When you're in the heart space, you can sense subtle energy a lot better. And so just dropping into the heart space, just being in the heart and you will, you will know which one of the wands. I do love the silver creation field wand. Now I actually do, you know, cause I utilize the wisdom wand for about 18 months to do all of that clearing of all the dialogue that was not truly mine, the clearing of all the lifetimes, the, um, you know, the good, bad, ugly, beautiful, the traumas, the everything and bringing that into wisdom. And so the wisdom wand really does have an excellent field for that clearing of lifetimes. <clears throat> now you can still utilize the creation field wand to do everything that the wisdom wand does. Um, I just, I really love the creation field wand. As a matter of fact, I have one in my bottle as well as you can see in there. Um, that's where I carry my creation field wand is in my water bottle. Um, but yeah, no, you can certainly use them together. And again, just kind of feeling into it. And you know, that's really the thing about these tools is, is that you, your higher self is very much a guide to, um, to utilizing these tools. Nika, I keep a quantum grid point pyramid in my car. <laughs> That's awesome. I definitely do too. Um, the quantum grid points are quite an underrated tool in all actuality. Um, those little grid points, which I usually have one sitting here at my desk. Um, they're pretty amazing because again, once you place one of those little pyramids into your space, have the intention of what you want your space to be. And as that pyramid energetically expands to cover your whole space, it holds sacred space with the flavor that you intend, whether that's for healing, connectivity, clearing work, however it is. Um, let's see. Oh, Renard. I use the dragon wand to create my dragon servitors. I can feel them come to life with it. Have you used any of the wands to connect to intended entities? Also ordered a creation field wand. <laughs> I'm glad you're getting the creation field wand. It is an amazing one. I think you're really going to love that one, Renard. Um, have we used the wand? Have I used any of the wands to connect to the intended entities? Um, so like with the dragon wands, yes, I, that is truly the purpose of that dragon wand is to open up that field of the dragons. And to do that, I usually just grab my dragon wand and I just make an intention as I make the circle and there they are right there in the field. Um, so gosh, utilizing, utilizing any of these tools now is so different prior to 2020 because at that time we lived in a different world and within this plane all beings could exist and now it's just humans and the other parts of our souls that exist here within this earth plane we can still connect with those other other dimensional beings such as the dragons the archangels whoever um, any of those that are not in physical human form, we can still connect with them, but it's different working with them because they really can't be here on this plane with us anymore because there has been a huge shift in consciousness and 
truly the, the, the guides, the angels, all the beings have been stepping away to truly allow us to step into our own. I'm not sure if I really answered your question or are not there in our, um, but yeah, the, the potentials that you can use with any of these tools is totally the imagination's the limit. And again, working with that creation field, Juan Renard, I think you're going to find um, some pretty phenomenal things. Uh, Alan, can you put water structured by tensor rings into a hydrogen generating bottle? Or does that disable all the good tensor rings do? You know, I am really not sure what the hydrogen generating bottle is or how they, what the process is that they utilize with it. Um, and you, you know, it is nice to run your water through a tensor ring to have it structured, cleaned and cleared before you do any work with it, filtration, hydrogen saturation, whatever the work is that you do with the water, it's nice to use the ring before and after. Um, you know, so if you're able to, um, you know, keep a ring with your bottle, that's certainly what I would suggest. But um, no matter what that process of creating the hydrogen in the bottle is, it's not going to knock out that consciousness of water that you've brought in by using the tensor rings. So again, the tensor rings does do all the physical work with the water, but it's also bringing in that light, the consciousness of the water. And so as long as that is present, it really should not have a huge effect on the water. Um, and again, water and all energy is so responsive and malleable anymore, especially when we're in our heart and we're speaking with it. We are asking the water, uh, and that's what I would do too, is I would just be in the heart space and I would ask your water after it goes through that hydrogen bottle to be still fully restructured and um, better than it was when it went in. And I tell you, it really is amazing what we can do by being in the heart space and having clear, conscious intent and choices. Quantum grid part and quantum grid point pyramid in the car spreads the yum everywhere I go. <laughs> yes. And you know, that is really a beautiful thing about having the tools. And this was a response for the quantum grid points being carried in the car. And that really is a fantastic thing because you do clear that space all around you, especially, you know, if like a tensor field generator, um, I actually glue an activator to the hood of my car. <laughs> so call it my buzz buster and deer whistle. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make an announcement here for some, a new product. So I'm going to put my, uh, my different hat on for doing a commercial. So I'll do a little infomercial for an introduction of our next product here. So Introducing the Hedica Garden Helpers. These are beautiful tools which you simply place into the soil. We make the smaller version for potted plants and the larger version for outdoors. Now it is shown that the Hedica, the symbol of the water elemental, the spirit of water, this symbol, when you place it on or in the soil, it promotes root growth in plants 15 feet across. It is also a restructuring water as well as bringing in the consciousness, consciousness of water into itself. Now, when you place these into the soil, of course, it's going to be promoting root growth. We also have the copper that goes into the soil, but these are also cut to sacred measurements. So they are creating a very small tensor field. Now the tensor fields that these create are not like a tensor ring, which is a very full and potent harmonizing field. They create a columnar vortex, a counter rotating vortex of energy. 
Now, with the Hedica Garden Helpers, to me, it looks just like this little fuzzy caterpillar looking energy field that comes off of the, the entire twisted wire. And that is still a tensor field. So it does keep your copper clean and clear. It is still putting a field into the soil. Um, when you do place these into the soil, um, you can just simply set it and forget it and just let it go and do its work. Now, it is nice when you, just like any of the tools, when you see this, when it comes into your awareness, you are sending your light and energy with your awareness as you see this. So like in the potted plants, I like to, I like to put mine in the potted plants to where I'll see it. Because again, once your awareness goes there, it just amplifies everything. We also have on our YouTube page, we have a GDV photo imaging of Hedica, the water elemental symbol, and how we can charge water. So there is a video on YouTube that shows the charging of water droplets with the Hedica and how they just become so vibrant and alive. Also in that video, it shows where there's just the Hedica innately, the energy of it, and then the Hedica, after the gentleman who was taking the photos, sat with the Hedica, sat in his heart, sent energy, and then he took a photo, and it totally expanded the field. So again, just having our attention will expand the field that is innately there and doing great things. So anyway, the Hedica Garden Helpers are now available at Twisted Sage. And again, we have the larger for 35, the smaller for 25, and they are absolutely wonderful for plants. So it does work in a similar fashion to the electroculture, that whole concept of gathering the etheric energy and bringing it into the soil. What I see these doing the most, though, is working with the plants, the consciousness of the plants, and that of the soil biome. And that is really where I see the magic of growing plants is, is working with the soil. So anyway, the Hedica Garden Helpers. <clears throat> and can these be used for hydroponic gardening as well? So yes, they can. Um, you just want to perhaps double check your copper levels. Um, they don't. You know, the, the copper wire does not leach a lot out into, into, the, um, into the waters, but depending on hmm, the salts, the pH, all of that, it can leach a little bit more copper than just normal water. So um, that's what I would say is if you have, you know, plants that are sensitive to, you know, their, their amounts of copper they need, then perhaps keep an eye on it. But otherwise, for the most parts, you should have absolutely no issues of utilizing the Hedicas in hydroponics. All right. Well, again, please do join us for our uh, Wisdom Circle Wednesdays if you are into that style of energy work, of the consciousness work. And um, let's see, Nika, it's the year of the dragon. Uh -huh. Sounds like it's time for us to wake up to all guides, our aspects of us and not separate from us. Is that what you meant when talking to Renard? So yes, you know, Lee Carroll and Cryon have always said that your guides are you. And at first I was like, yeah, well, whatever. I, I never quite understood that concept. Um, you know, and prior to 2020, there were other guides that weren't us. Um, there were many others that could come in, you know, Archangels, Metatron, Thoth, whoever. Um, but truly it, it is a different world. And yes, the guides that you should truly rely on are you. Um, your soul, because some of the guides that we see that are a part of us may be another lifetime 
that has not come into wisdom. And I actually see this quite often that people are like, oh, it's my soul mission. This is something I have to do. I have a higher self that's on a ship and it's commanding me to write these books and all of this. That is nothing more than an aspect of your soul that is still vying for your energy into creation. It is trying to work through you into creation. So I am very, um, I have a tendency to see a lot of those parts that come in to talk to us, to bring us our missions and everything else. I really, I, yeah, I, I would really take that with a grain of salt. And again, the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays is a great place to come to help to integrate those aspects to the soul, to wisdom. Truly the guidance that, um, you know, that the highest guidance is you and it doesn't give you words or missions or things to complete. It brings things to you in a whole different way. It's subtle without the words. Um, but you know, it is okay. It is all appropriate, whatever it is that you do, um, because it is all an individual journey. I'm just sharing what it is um, on a different perspective, because truly all these things are real, but there's just various perspectives. So anyway, I don't mean to get too far down the rabbit holes here. That's for Wisdom Circle Wednesdays. And to answer that question, um, how do we sign up for this? Simply be sure to sign up for our newsletter at the bottom of twistedsage.com. There is a spot to sign up for the newsletter. And then we'll send out a newsletter um, announcing the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays along with the link for registration. Um, Let's see. And then the question about uh, working with hydroponics and the, and the Hedica helpers. And the question is, would a tensor ring work better? Most definitely a tensor ring would work better for hydroponics because basically a little ring can charge like a 20 gallon container of water as long as the water is all within the same container because it, even though they create a column of light, it spreads throughout all the water within that container because there is a communication, a oneness within that water. So most certainly with hydroponics, that is what I would suggest is to use any of the rings and the, uh, the light bangles. One is the most updated energy and two it is the most economical. And so I would suggest a light bangle for underneath of your trays or underneath of your main water. And, um, that will restructure that water within six to eight hours at the most. So definitely use a tensor ring with your hydroponics is, is totally what I would suggest. Um, so let's see. Uh, just reading some comments. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> some great folks on here and lots of wisdom. So again, Please do join us live here and get to chat with, with all of these wonderful peeps. Well, I guess I'm going to cut it early here today. Um, again, we're saving most of our meditations and, and all the woo-woo talk for the Wisdom Circle Wednesdays. We'll still do some meditations here from time to time on Fit to Questions Friday. But... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it is snowy out and I have to get a friend to the airport on some roads that may be closed. So I'm going to get going. Thank you all very much for being here again. And we'll see you here in two weeks. Otherwise, perhaps we'll see you next week on the Wisdom Circle Wednesday. And thanks again for being here. I hope you take advantage of our sale here over the weekend, um, which you can find the Hedica Garden Helpers. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.